What's up, Facebook Live? Hey, I just thought I'm going to record a podcast for the L3 Leadership Podcast. I'm doing it once a month. I do a personal leadership lesson. So I just thought I'm starting to record them on video. I thought I'd also give you the opportunity to watch live if you'd like to. Um, So format wise, I'm not going to be paying too much attention to the Facebook Live screen. Um, So if you're on here and asking questions or commenting, I'm I'm probably not going to see it until the end. If some of you guys are still on here, uh, I can hop on the end and do some Q&A. But if not, I'll just leave this video up and I will be recording the podcast and the podcast will be up tomorrow. So I hope that you enjoy. Um, That being said, we're just going to jump right into the lesson. And so, again, I won't be able to pay too much attention to the Facebook screen, but here we go. So today I'd like to talk to you guys on the subject of seven benefits of being a young leader. I'm actually going to be starting a two-part series on um, being a young leader. This month I'll focus on the advantages of being a young leader. And then next month's episode, I will focus on the seven disadvantages of being a young leader. Uh, One resource that I want to recommend to everyone who's listening is called Spiritual Leadership. It's by J. Oswald Chambers. Uh, It's a fantastic book. I've gone through it many, many times. And we recently just went through it uh, in our mastermind group. And it was absolutely phenomenal. And after reading it again, I'm like, wow, literally every leader really does need uh, to read this book. So if you're a young leader, pick up the book Spiritual Leadership by J. Oswald Chambers and read it now. It is a must read for leaders. Why do I want to do this lesson? Uh, I want to do this lesson specifically for two people. Uh, I want to do it for young leaders, and I want to do this lesson also for seasoned leaders. Um, Let me talk just for a minute to young leaders first. Um, For young leaders, I wanted to do this lesson because I want young leaders to know that you're not alone. Uh, I know there's a tension between where you are now and where you'd like to be. I know you get frustrated. Uh, I know you think you could do a better job than your leaders do. I know you want to change the world and you're just waiting for your chance. Uh, literally, I know. And that's why I want to do this lesson. I want to speak right to you because I'm in the middle of that uh, myself. Something that really encouraged me, John Maxwell said this uh, one time in a leadership lesson that really encouraged me. He said, in the beginning of life or your leadership journey, he said, you're not that bad. <laughs> he said, don't you just want to tell your leaders that sometimes? Like, listen, hey, I'm bad, but I'm not that bad. Um, but he said this, he said, but if you do things right in life, in the end, you're not as good as people think you are. And somewhere in between those two is where you should live as a leader. And, and I just love that. And that encouraged me, listen, you're not that bad where you are. You may think you are, but you're not that bad. But if you'll just handle today correctly and you'll handle your, your season as a young leader correctly, I promise you the second half of your life will take care of itself. And as John said, in the end, you're not as good as people think. And I just hope that that encourages you. Second thing I want young leaders to know is that you are in one of the most exciting seasons of your life and do not miss it. Do not miss it because you're so excited about what's next. I was interviewing Matthew Keller, who's a pastor in Florida, a few months back. And I asked him, you know, if you could have coffee with your 20-year-old self, what would you tell him? And his answer was so interesting. He said, if I could have coffee with my 20-year-old self, I would say, just relax, man. Just relax. All those dreams in your heart, everything that you see that you want to happen, it's going to happen. Just relax and don't miss on some of the best moments of your life just because you're so focused on the vision and dreams inside of your heart. And uh, that really set me free because I miss on a lot of moments because I'm so focused on tomorrow. And uh, and I'm going to take Matt's advice to just, hey, all those things that God put in my heart, I didn't put them there. God put them there. And he, he, he'll take care of them. If I'll handle my part, God will take care of his part. So just rest in that. Another thing I want young leaders to know, again, if you make the right decisions in this leader, in this season as a young leader, you'll get to where you need to go and get to where God wants you to be. I promise you. And then lastly, I want you to know that one day you won't be a young leader. It's crazy. I think something so interesting for me is a lot of the leaders um, that I look up to, uh, especially now when I first met them, they were in their 30s and 40s. And now they're no longer young leaders. They're starting to get into that older leader category. Uh, And it's so interesting how their mind shift is starting to change into, hey, how do I point to the next generation? And I'm sure for them, when as I talk to them, it was was a snap of a finger. That season was so brief um, that they were a young leader. Now all of a sudden they're thinking succession. They're thinking about their legacy and a whole other set of things. And I just want to encourage you, listen, you won't be a young leader forever. So just enjoy this season. And if you'll just remember that, I know you think you'll be young forever, but you won't. Your time is going to come when you're going to have the position. You're going to have the company. You're going to have all that stuff. But do not miss out on this season being a young leader. 
If you're a seasoned leader, uh, there's a few things I want to challenge you with in this lesson is number one, I want you to see the value of young leaders. I couldn't say it better, any better than Craig Groeschel said it the other day in his leadership podcast. He said, um, listen, if you're a senior leader, he said, you have to listen to the younger leaders around you. He goes, if you don't care what younger leaders think, it's completely unacceptable. He goes, if that's true that you don't care what they think, then you either have the wrong people or you are the wrong leader. They are the most valuable resource that you have. And so one, I just want to challenge you. If you're a senior leader, value the young leaders you have in your church. The second thing I want you to recognize is I want you to remember what it was like when you were a young leader. Do you remember that you were in the exact same boat, that you probably thought everything your senior leader did was bad or that you could do a better job, that you wanted so desperately for the dreams in your heart to come to pass, but you just didn't know how to do it? Remember that, that you were in those shoes one time. Don't forget where you came from. Recognize where young leaders are. And then lastly, I want you to invest in young leaders. You know, who are you bringing up behind you? Who are you pouring into that can take your place one day? What's your legacy going to be behind? And I hope that through listening to this lesson, you'll be reminded of where you came from and that you'll be challenged and inspired to invest in the next generation. So that's the why behind the lesson. Uh, with that being said, I want to jump right into the seven benefits of being a young leader uh, from my perspective. And I'd love to have some conversation after this on what you think some benefits are. But benefit number one is you have the opportunity to learn while you don't have to lead. You have an opportunity to learn while you don't have to lead. You know, as young leaders, we all want to be the leader now. <laughs> and I think one reason we all want to be the leader now is because we perceive leadership having all these benefits. And I think the older I get, and again, I'm not that old, but the older I get, the more I realize that all the perks I thought leader have, have all the perks I thought leaders have comes along with a huge price, a huge price. Um, John Maxwell said this, he said, people who idolize the privileges of leadership often fail to notice the sacrifice involved. And, you know, when you, when you don't have to lead, you don't know what it's like to have to think of the responsibility of the whole organization. You're not responsible for all the money of the organization. You don't have to fire people. You can just go to work every day and show up. And you don't have no idea the weight of senior leadership. And I'm not saying that I do. I, I'm in the beginning of my leadership journey. But I do know this, that while we don't have that weight on our shoulders, we have an awesome opportunity to put for us every single day to learn how to become the leaders that God's called us to be. And that's really what I want to challenge you to do. If God's, Joe Brooks said this, he said, when God gives you an opportunity to learn, get in the front row. Get in the front row. Because one day we're going to be in those leaders' shoes. And we're either going to be glad that we learned from them and learned from the leaders while we were young leaders, or we're going to wish we would have learned from them. And so I want to encourage you, take time to ask questions of the leaders in your life. Ask them, what, what is it actually like to bear all the responsibility and be responsible for an entire organization? What's it like to realize that, that 50 people are relying on you for their paycheck and for the good of their family? What is it like to have to fire someone and let someone go? You know, those are things that young leaders don't always have to think through. And I think it'll help you to cause, it'll cause you to be a lot more empathetic towards your senior leaders and it'll help you develop as a leader. And another thing I'd say while you're learning is uh, I would encourage you to make a list. I'm always adding to this list, but, you know, make a list of things that you'll do when you get into a leadership position and then make a list of things that you'll never do when you're in a leadership position. And, you know, sometimes God will put you under leaders that, that you may not want to be under, that you get frustrated by. Uh, I don't know if you've ever prayed this, but like <laughs> I've prayed the prayer before, like, God, why? Why would you put me here? Why am I under this person? What did I do to deserve this? Um, but something that God's taught me is that person and that leader may be exactly who God needs to put in my life to help me grow in an area of my life. And oftentimes the things that I get frustrated with about and the leaders that I uh, don't have as much respect for are things that I actually need. And I'm not saying that's always the case. If you're under unhealthy leaders, you may have to leave. I'm not saying to always stay under unhealthy leaders, but I'm telling you this, that while God's giving you an opportunity to learn, take advantage of it. Get in the front row, like Gerald Brooks said, because here's why I know God is far more interested in your development as a person and your character than he is about you being happy at this stage in your life as a young leader. Your, your youth is simply, uh, a, a, it's a time to develop. And that's what God is really, really concerned about. And lastly, I'll say this about the learning stage of being a young leader. I love this. This just really encouraged me the other day. Uh, Matt Keller said this, and he said, if you're a leader, remember this today. He said, you did not choose this. 
you were chosen for this and lead like that's true today. And that just really helped me because I think sometimes as a young leader, we think we have to prove ourselves. We have to earn our right to lead. And while, yes, I'm not saying you don't have to earn respect and things like that. But in general, like God put it in you to want to lead. God put that gifting in you for a reason. And if that's true, then God chose you to be a leader. God chose you to lead. And you may not know what the ultimate purpose of that is. But if that's true, you were chosen for this. And so show up every day and act like you were leading for God. And that God is shaping you. And it will change the way you show up to work every day day and it'll really allow you to rest in God and allow him to let him develop you uh, in your season as a young leader. So benefit number one again was you have the opportunity to learn while you don't have to lead. Benefit number two you get to build the foundation that will impact you for the rest of your life. Again in your teens your 20s and early 30s you should be discovering who you are what your gifts are what you're passionate about, how to deal with conflict in a healthy way, how to relate with people with different personalities, how to work hard, how to work smart, how to work through the lids in our lives, how to serve, how to handle money, how to stay fit, how to become emotionally healthy. Like There is a ton to learn when you're a young leader. And you, you're building the foundation that you're going to build the rest of your life upon. And do not take those things for granted. You have so much to learn before you step into the ultimate call that God put on your life. Do not take that for granted. Oswald Chambers said this, he said, When a person is marked out for leadership, God will see to it that that person receives the necessary disciplines for effective service. Again, I made a list of 10 things there. Those 10 things could easily take you 10 to 20 years to really build a solid foundation on so God could really use you in a significant way. So just remember that God is developing your foundation. But here's the problem. Perry Noble said this. I thought it was so good. He said, some people would rather be discovered than developed. Some people would rather be discovered than developed. And they're just waiting for their chance. God, I hope one day that I just arrive and I can lead an organization of 10,000 people and it'll be awesome. Uh, And they're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to be discovered. But here's the problem. If they don't develop, they're never going to be discovered. And God will never be able to use them in a significant way. Develop your foundation. Again, if you'll handle the first half of your life correctly, the second half will take care of itself. Benefit number three. Realize that you have a ton, and I'm just going to say a ton, you have a ton of time to grow and develop. You have a ton of time. If you're a young leader, I'm telling you, and I'm just starting to get this all throughout my 20s, I had so many of my mentors say, Doug, enjoy this season. Enjoy this season and you get to focus on growth as much as you are. I would tell them, oh, I get to listen to, you know, three hours of John Maxwell every night. I read 20 books, you know, whatever. And I'm telling them all these things I'm doing. And they're saying, listen, bro, when you get a family and when you have kids, you're not going to have all this time to grow and develop. So take as much time as you can now. And so I just want to encourage you, while you're a young leader, what are you doing to grow and develop? Do you have a personal growth plan? What podcasts are you listening to? What books are you reading? What leaders are you spending time with? Who's sharpening you? You know, my personal growth journey started when I was 17 years old. Pastor Larry Betancourt handed me a John Maxwell CD. I still remember it was called Standing Tall, Enjoy Stewardship Services. It was awesome. I didn't know it came with notes, so I literally transcribed the entire lesson um, hand by hand. But after I listened to it, I felt like Neo in the Matrix, uh, like when he wants to learn Kung Fu. And I called Pastor Larry, and I was like, Pastor Larry, give me everything you have on leadership, everything. And I remember him giving me binders and binders and binders of John Maxwell CDs. And it sounds lame, but literally for for two or three years, every night for two or three hours, I would listen to John Maxwell CDs to go to sleep. Uh, I would have my friends over and try to make them watch the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership DVDs, which they absolutely loved. Uh, Actually, they thought I was joking, and then they all left when they found out I was serious. but, But that's okay. But what are you doing to grow and develop? I was watching a, uh, a Facebook Live uh, event with Mark Zuckerberg the other day, and someone asked him, what, what makes Facebook so successful? And his answer was simply, we're obsessed with education. We're obsessed with learning. And, uh, and at the end of the day, he was saying, we're obsessed with personal growth, and we do everything we can to grow to our maximum potential. And really, I want to encourage you, while you have time to grow and develop in, in your early 20s and 30s, do everything you can to grow and develop. Have a personal plan for growth. It'll set you up for success. The fourth benefit I see is uh, uh, for young leaders is this. Seasoned leaders or senior leaders, people always like how I, whatever adjective I use, but older leaders, whatever you want to say, but they're longing to invest in you. 
I found that seasoned leaders are longing to invest in young leaders. It's part of the reason I started L3 Leadership. Um, Pastor Larry would actually bring in um, speakers from the church that were successful in business, and they would speak to us and share about leadership. And he would always say, hey, guys, if you're smart, you'll ask these guys out to coffee. You'll send them questions, and you'll learn from them, and hopefully they can become mentors in your life. And so I just started doing that, and I did it over and over and over again. And eventually, my peers started saying, wow, I wish I could spend time with so-and-so. And I always tell them the same answer. You could spend time with so-and-so if you would just ask them. They're longing to pour into you. And the more leaders I spend time with, especially as they get older, listen, the leaders that I spend time with, they've, they've reached the success, they've hit the sales record, they've built their organizations. And can I tell you what really lights a fire in them? It's developing the next generation. I mean, literally, that is all they're passionate about because now they're thinking about legacy. They don't have to prove that they're a leader or prove that they're an entrepreneur. They just want to pour into the next generation. And so I don't have time to teach how to, to get mentors, but uh, I wrote an ebook on it called Making the Most of Mentoring. It's literally my step-by-step -step process for how I get meetings with mentors. If you're interested in that, you can get it for free, um, either on my website or L3 Leadership. You can go to DougSmithLive.com um, or L3Leadership.org, and you'll, a pop-up will appear and say, would you like your free copy of Making the Most of a Mentor? And it's a great resource. Again, people always ask, how do I get meetings? I literally... I'm giving you a free step-by-step -step guide. So you can go ahead and check that out and I hope it adds value to your life. Benefit number five of being a young leader, you have ideas that your company has not thought of before. You have ideas that your company has not thought of before and they need to know about. Um, I remember I was listening to Rick Warren one time tell an audience that he actually took two years off from being the senior pastor at Saddleback in order to spend that time with the 20-somethings of the church. And I thought that was so interesting, and uh, he talked about why he did that. He said, the reason that I spent two years with 20-somethings is because nobody did it for me when I was in my 20s. He said, everything you see at Saddleback today, everything he's doing with his life today, it was in his heart when he was at, in his 20s. But no senior leaders cared enough to talk to him about it. And he said, I will not do that for the generation behind me. And man, don't, wouldn't you all love a, a leader like Rick Warren to spend two years with you to get the ideas? But I just want to encourage you, if you're a young leader, don't shy away from the things that God's put in your heart and the ideas that you have. You can add more value to your organization than you think you can. You don't have to be a VP. You don't have to be a tenured leader. You can add value right where you're at by leading up. In fact, um, I just listened to a podcast by Craig Rochelle on this uh, called Leading Up. I encourage you all to listen to it. Um, but he talked about, he said, if you're a young leader, you're thinking of solutions the problems that people don't even know exist in your organization. You're thinking about solutions to problems that some people don't even know exist within your organization. So again, don't be afraid to bring up your ideas um, to, the next, or to the senior leaders in your organization. And I'll say this, if you're a senior leader and maybe you're not like Rick Warren, you're saying, I don't have time to listen. Uh, again, I'm a young leader, so I don't know how much what I have to say matters to you. But Craig Rochelle in his podcast said this, I thought it was such a challenge. He said, if you don't care what the young leaders in your organization think, it's completely unacceptable. He goes, if it's true that you don't care, then you either have the wrong people or you, have the, or you are the wrong leader. They're the most valuable resource that you have. So that's my challenge to senior leaders is take time to listen to the young leaders in their church. They, they know what the future of your church is going to look like. They know what the future of your organization is going to look like. And they can really help take your organization to the next level. My challenge to young leaders when it comes to having ideas is, is th at the end of the day, you have to earn the right to be heard. And what do I mean by that? Um, I mean, just you have to be an all-star. Are you, are, you, are you giving your best every day? Do you have a great attitude? Uh, you know, are you giving your senior leaders a reason to listen to you? Is it right or not that you have to earn your, their respect? I don't think it's a bad thing. I think you should earn their respect. But I, I promise you, if you're an all-star where you're at, if you're developing your potential, if you do all your work with excellence, if you show up, your leaders will listen to you. And if you don't do those things, if you show up to work with a crappy attitude, if you have a horrible work ethic, then why? You, then your leaders shouldn't listen to you. Grow up. What's up? <laughs> uh, just a thought. So, again, that was your, you have ideas your company's not thought of before. Use them. Two more benefits before we wrap up. Benefit number six, um, you have time as a young leader to work out a lot of issues in your life now so they won't hurt you and others later. You have a lot of time right now to work out issues in your life now so they won't hurt you or other, others 
either. And why this is so important, Joyce Meyer summed it up. She said, as leaders, we have to realize that as our influence grows, so does our ability to help people. However, as, our, as many people as we can help, we can also hurt. And that's why character development is so important. It's great to want to influence thousands of people for good, but what ends up if you happening to, to hurt those thousands of people? And if you don't grow your de and develop your character, the potential of you hurting them is very, very high. And so how do you actually work out the issues in your life in order to get healthy? Three simple steps I've thought about in developing your character. Number one, follow God with all of your heart. Follow God with all of your heart. And I don't know if you're listening to this and not a believer, but I believe if you really want to be a man or woman of character, you have to follow God with all of your heart. And when you do, I'm telling you, when you start following God, he'll start to deal with you about issues and he'll give you the grace and the support you need to actually work through the issues. And he'll set you free from the issues in your life. And God knows every single issue that you'll ever need to work on in your entire life. And he'll only work on them one at a time, which is wonderful. He doesn't make you work on them all at once. But God will grow you up. And so trust God to develop your character. The second way you can develop your character is by surrounding yourself with godly leaders that are older than you, that can call you out, that can tell you no, and inform you of your blind spots. Who do you have in your life that can tell you no? If you don't have anybody that can call you out on that, you're missing out an opportunity to develop your character and develop your leadership. Get people in your life that can tell you no. Three is go to counseling. Again, man, I think therapy is a good thing. I think counseling is a good thing. More, I think smart people go to counseling, not crazy people. And so I just want to encourage you, don't be afraid to ask for help. And again, get great friends around you that can, again, speak into your life and be honest with you. But I just want to encourage you, spend the majority of, of your time as a young person developing your character. It's, oh man, man, I don't know about you. Something that always challenges me, my senior pastor, he always says this. He says, I believe about 2% of Christian leaders actually make it to their finish line with integrity. 2% in his experience. And that scares me. Because guys, uh, it's exciting to be 30 and living for God and still dreaming about the future. And, and I have a family and I have a baby and, and family life's great and leadership's great. But guys, if, if I don't make it to my finish line, then what's it worth? What's it worth? I remember John Maxwell always talking about when he was in his late 30s, he started noticing all of his peers started getting divorces because they, they started prioritizing work over everything else and never learned how to develop their character. And as a result, their lives fell apart and they never ended up doing what God called them to do. Um, and again, I just want to encourage you, develop your character. And we just went over how to do that. And then lastly, the seventh benefit I see of being a young leader um, and this is so simple, but it had such a profound impact on my life. But you have time to serve. You have time to serve. And the reality is, I'm not saying that if you're older, you don't have time to serve. We all have time to serve. But the reality is, when you're young, you have a ton of time to serve. And if I can encourage young leaders to do anything while they're young, it's serve, 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 serve. Get involved with nonprofits. Get involved with your church. Get involved with organizations. Just get involved and give your life away. I love what Tony Campolo said. Tony Campolo once said this. He said, the age of youth was not meant for pleasure, but for heroic service. I love that. The age of youth was not meant for pleasure, but for heroic service. And um, why do I believe young leaders need to be serving somewhere? Because I truly believe in my heart that serving uh, not only is a good for, and blesses others, but I believe serving catapults your growth. Um, I've met so many of the mentors in my life. I've developed my best friends from serving. I've learned my strengths and weaknesses through serving. I've discovered my passions through serving. I've developed my character through serving. And I've made a, lot, a difference in the lives of others all through serving and volunteering. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're, if you're a young leader, if you're anybody listening to this, are you serving somewhere? And if you're not serving somewhere, if you're not giving your life away, you're missing out on one of the greatest tools and greatest growth opportunities that God's ever given you. Get involved somewhere serving. So real quick, we'll review. And uh, if anyone has questions, I guess I'll try them Facebook Live. Um, but review, seven benefits. Number one, you can learn while you don't have the responsibility of leading. Number two, you have an opportunity to build the foundation you need for the rest of your life. Number three, you have a ton of time to grow and develop as a young leader. Number four, seasoned leaders are longing to pour into your life. Longing, longing, longing to pour into your life. Number five, you have ideas your company's not thought of before and needs. Number six, you have an opportunity to work through your issues, your character issues, and develop your character. And then number seven, you have time to serve. 
So as you guys look over that list, and again, um, if you're on Facebook Live, uh, I'm going to include all of my show notes in the podcast episode tomorrow, uh, so I'll be promoting that. But as you look over that list and heard, my hope is that you start valuing your season as an emerging leader. It's an important one, um, and even though it may seem like it, you're not going to be a young leader forever. This season won't last forever. So one, enjoy it. Please enjoy being a young leader. My 20s are over. I'm 31 years old, which is crazy. Like, I, I, when I go to college ministry sometimes, I'm like, wow, this seems like it was decades ago that I used to live this life. And it went by like that. And to be honest, I missed out on some of it because I wasn't present because I was so focused on where I'd be when I was in my 30s. And I pray that I can't say that when I get to 40. But enjoy the season of your life. And remember, if you'll be intentional with this season of your life, you'll be successful when you get to the place that God ultimately called you to be. Some questions to reflect on. Um, one, what, be- what are the benefits of being a young leader that you've been taking for granted? Number two, what are you doing right now to become an all-star where you're at? Number three, what are you learning currently right now when you don't have to lead? What good qualities do you see in leaders that you want to emulate? And what bad characters do you see in leaders that you never want to emulate? And then lastly, what would character issues or God- is God working on in your life? He's shaping your character. What areas is God dealing with you right now to grow and develop? And I guess on Facebook Live, I'll just open it up to this for discussion. Um, What are some of the other benefits of being a young leader that you see? Maybe that I didn't mention. Um, And I'll also open it up for question and answer just in case anyone has any. There's 14 people on. Um, If anyone has questions, I'll answer them. If not, we'll wrap up. And uh, again, this was actually the recording for our podcast, the L3 Leadership Podcast, that you can check out on iTunes. And since I'm on Facebook Live, if you're on iTunes, I would love it and it would really appreciate it if you would subscribe on iTunes and leave a rating and review for the podcast. It really does help us grow our audience. So um, that being said, does anyone have anything to say on Facebook before we wrap up? And everyone knows my tolerance for silence or no response is very little, so I'll only give it a few seconds. All right. Well, hey, I'll just take a new one ask questions. If you do, you can always email me at dougsmith at l3leadership.org. Thanks for listening. I love you guys. I hope this podcast added value to your life. And uh, if you enjoyed this, let me know. I'd love to do some more um, Facebook Live. So hope you have a great day. See you guys.